In this demonstration, we are going to look at the LDAP protocol. LDAP, or the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, is a protocol used to interrogate directory servers, such as Microsoft's Active Directory. In enterprise networks, the directory contains all information needed for single sign-on, and in many cases, much more information. That includes usernames, passwords, organizational units, titles, um, names, telephone numbers, uh, you name it, and it will be stored in the directory. A directory is a good thought because it is a single point of control and a single point of maintenance. It also gives you a single point of visibility. It is that single point of visibility that we are going to be using in this stage of our attack. At the moment, we are only interested in gathering information. LDAP and directory servers are databases, but they do not use SQL or SQL as a language to interact with. They use their own LDAP structure, which at times is a little confusing. LDAP is not necessarily meant to be used by humans directly. It is really much more meant as a computer-to-computer -computer protocol. As a result, some of the command lines that we will be executing look a little arcane, but you know we will we'll, we'll go with it. The tool we can use is called LDAP Search. LDAP Search um, will connect out to a LDAP server. First, we have to give it the information as to where that LDAP server is. And we have to tell it that um, this is a, secu a secure LDAP server. We are going to connect without giving it a username. B is short for bind, which is LDAP words for username. Um, a bind without specifying a username is called an anonymous bind. Most LDAP servers don't give out a lot of information that way, but it's giving us a starting point that we'll need going forward. We are searching the base of the LDAP server, and we're really looking for anything. Object class equals the wildcard. Once we run this command, we'll get a lot of output back. Not a lot of it is all that interesting, but there are a couple things that we need to keep an eye on. Starting here, um, the LDAP server does give us a current time, but it does give the current time in Zulu, uh, which is universal time coordinated. That's a central time that is not subject to change with time zones, daylight savings, or any of that. What we're primarily interested in is finding the route for the next searches that we'll be doing, and that is listed over here. DC is short for Domain Controller, and in this case, this is a domain controller for the CSC 380 domain, which is part of the AU CSC 380 forest, which it belongs to Adelphi.edu. This is information we'll need to be able to do subsequent searches. All the other information is nice, but not very useful at this point in time. So far, this hasn't been terribly exciting, so let's uh, continue. Now that we have the base for our directory server, um, we can do some more interesting searches. For example, we can do an LDAP search of the host with security enabled, but this time we're not gonna leave it blank. We're gonna actually um, start specifying a search base. Um, this is the line I just copied and pasted from our previous output. Um, and we're going to tell it that um, our name is going to be case at csc380.au, csc380.adelphi.edu. Um, that the LDAP query thing should prompt me for my password um, on the terminal rather than me typing it so you can see it. And at this point, we're going to be interested in Let's find out anything that there is to know about me. My surname is Lerna. I just typed my password. It didn't echo on the screen, uh, so I didn't give anything away. But here we go. So, a lot of information coming out. Now, let's scroll back to the top of where our search began, which is right here. So, this is uh, the search we just entered. And we see that we have some output coming out we see that uh, the DN, the distinguished name, which is the 
unique identifier for me is canonical name, is a descriptive name, is me, case learner, that I am part of the domain uh, organizational unit called domain users, and that that organizational unit is part of this Active Directory domain. I am a person, I am an organizational person, and I am a user. And here are the fields again. My name is Case Leuner, my surname is Leuner, my given name is Case. This is my distinguished name. Um, gives some information about when the accounts were created. In this case, 2019-0106 at 19 54 and 02 seconds Zulu. Um, at the moment we are in a winter time, uh, which means that we are, let's say, five hours behind Zulu time. So this was actually a little later uh, than it appears to be. Or more specifically, Zulu is five hours ahead of us, which means that this was January 6th, 1954, but factor in for those five hours. So it is about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. This is how I would like to be known. But what is interesting is users can be part of groups. And in this particular case, member of, I am a part of the domain admins group. And domain administrators are people who have full and unlimited access to the directory. So someone who's able to get access to my account knows that he has access to a domain administrator account, which is a very powerful tool in the um, arsenal of an attacker. So if I am an attacker, I know that now this case account is a high-valued target. We've also seen some other options, such as, for example, show me everyone who does have a last name. At this point, I can eliminate lots of information and only stick with people who have a name. Let me run this through a pager. And type my password again. And so here I am again. Um, we already saw me, but we'll also see that there is a domain uh, user called John Smith. And when we look at John's memberships, uh, let's see if we can find him. Member of, oh, not included. That means he is not part of any additional groups other than the organizational unit to which he belongs. So John Smith may be less of a high value target, uh, and that could be others. All of this can be done through relatively simple um, command line searches. The benefit of using a command line is that we can script and automate it rather than having to click through GUI windows that we need to do manually. Now, relatively simple, yes, we need to break it down in all the different parameters and options, but in the end, you know, once we do that step by step, it is not all that difficult. Note, however, that in order to browse the directory, you need to have at least an account with um, in the directory before you can pull any useful information. As we'll see later this semester, finding an account on a domain is not all that terribly difficult in many cases.